going on guys welcome back to the channel pete's carport it is extremely hot out today we're in the sun but i want to play around with the uh, 318i that we just picked up it's the uh, manual bmw 1991 and um <clears throat> Most of the car has been gutted out to be a drift car. If you guys haven't caught the first video, um, I'll open it up. I was going to try to uh, wedge that auto power roll cage that came in the car, but I'm not 100% sure if it's specifically for the car. It seems like it's going to fit, but it, man, it needs some um, heavy working. If you guys know anything about these uh, roll cages, how to fit them in there, do I need to take my front seats out um, and kind of maneuver it in there? That is something I can definitely do, but I figured while it was back here, I could just try to wedge it up there, and it just doesn't seem uh, like it's going to go together the way that it's supposed to, and where these cross braces here attached to on the car uh, is confusing because it's not really going to any specific spot uh, that it could bolt to, which is there's bolt holes on the end of it. So if you guys know anything about that, if you have one of these cars or have ever installed one of these roll cages, uh, please fill me in in the comments. But Let's move on to what this video is about. Um, also, before I do, uh, I just got the exhaust put on. So that's going to be um, another video that I'm going to talk about. It's, uh, we end up going with the HKS. So if you're watching this video, look forward to the sound clip in that video. I'm going to talk about that in a separate one. Today, what we're going to do is um, remove our computer. So if you have a car that's not stripped down like this, this is basically completely gutted. You're going to go into your glove box, remove your glove box, um, and then you're going to be able to access this. So this is your computer. And the reason why I want to pull this out is this car feels like it's got a lot more power. It could be just because of the light weight. This thing's basically nothing but metal framing. But it also could be that we have a chip. So I don't want to go ordering anything for this car that's already installed. A very common upgrade is to, to do a chip on this car. There's quite a few other ones that we're going to be working on as well to increase horsepower for very minimal cost. In fact, some of them are you just doing a little bit of work. This one does include does have a cost to it, but it's two or three hundred bucks for a very nice chip that's going to give you ten to fifteen uh, wheel horsepower. So a pretty good upgrade. So let's go ahead. I'll set this up. We're basically going to um, undo these ten millimeter bolts and be able to drop this down and uh, we're going to pull this off. I'm actually going to undo my battery just in case because you do not want to fry uh, your computer because then you're going to have to pick up another one. So let me go undo the negative cable. I'm going to unbolt this and then we'll put it on the bench and we'll go ahead and look at what's inside of this. Okay guys, so obviously we took this out of the car so that we could crack it open to see if there's already a performance chip in it. Now if you look at the title of the video, you're gonna know that I've already cheated, opened this up and I know there's not a performance chip, it is the stock chip in here. Fortunately, I jumped online and found an insane deal on a Dynan performance chip that I'm absolutely excited to put into this thing. So, instead of just cracking this open and looking, I'll show you guys how you can tell, but we're going to go ahead and open this up and install our chip that I've got right here. This chip is going to allow us, the most exciting part is, to go up to 7,000 plus RPM. So that is going to be absolutely amazing. It says it provides about 20 wheel horsepower. Uh, that's kind of up in the air. A lot of these chips will claim higher horsepower and not really give it. But Dynan's a pretty good company. Obviously, they work directly with BMW. And so it could do it. So next, you're going to go ahead and grab yourself a Torx bit. I don't have the exact size of this because this set doesn't tell you what the size is, but um, it's not a very big one. So if you have a set, you probably have it in that set. And we're just going to go ahead and take these four screws out. 
So before we unscrew the screws on the other side, you do want to make sure these tabs here are bent open. You can use a flathead screwdriver and basically pry them out. Mine were actually already pried out. I don't know if somebody already went into this uh, ECU or if they, that's just how it was. So I wanted to point that out that on most of these models, you are going to have to bend that out before you can pull the casing off. Okay, I've removed all the screws. Now, one of the most important things you need to do is basically de-static your body. Uh, they sell bracelets, which I highly recommend doing because this can be very dangerous in the fact that you could short out something. Not dangerous as in you're going to hurt yourself, but dangerous as in you could short out your whole entire computer here and have to get a new one. Um, the way that I'm going to do it is by touching a metal pole. That will draw the electricity out of my body. They call it uh, ESD. Uh, if you research it, you can find different ways to prevent uh, that electronic static discharge. So let's go ahead. I'm going to basically do that now, and then we're going to open this up. Okay, now we want to find the chip that's going to be where our performance chip goes. Now let me go ahead and pull out this Dynan chip because you're going to be able to look at this chip and basically figure out from there which is the chip we're taking out. And obviously it's right there. Uh, one of the main things that you want to make sure is on both of these chips there is going to be um, a little notch. Now they they sell these they they ship these in uh, anti-static bags too, which is great because that creates uh, no static in the chip. So you see there, there's a little notch. So we want to go um, on the stock one here and find that notch and find the direction. So we see our notches on this side. So when we install this chip, we want to make sure we install it with our notch facing the same way. So I'm just going to set that up there so that we have this facing the right way. Now we're going to gently, very gently pry up our chip. I'm going to actually grab a smaller screwdriver to pry this chip up. So I actually have this set of picks from Harbor Freight. I'm going to use this slightly bigger one. And what we're going to do is, uh, let me show you here, is you're going to get up underneath, hopefully you can see that, up underneath this part here. See if I can focus and you're just gonna, we're gonna be prying like so. I'm gonna do it setting it down, and I'm just gonna be prying. You're gonna go from one side to the other, being very gentle, and eventually it's just gonna pop up. Now, you also wanna count the pins to make sure you've got your right chip. Now, when I ordered this, it was specific to this Bosch uh, ECU, and I made sure and double checked so I'm going to go ahead and count these and make sure it, it matches up with the one that we got in from Dynan. And it does. They both have 14. Now remember, like I said, we're going to be placing this on exactly the way that the other one went with that little notch. We want to make sure we line up our pins. We don't want to press down until those pins are really well lined up into the sockets on both sides. And you, you want to make sure that the little pins are going into the holes so you don't press down and damage it. I'm going to line this up perfectly, and then we're going to press down on it. Okay, so what I did was I lined up one side, and then I took my pick and slowly moved each pin in so it was in the hole. And now that we got everything lined up, we're just going to press down so that it seats the chip. And that is really it. We just want to make sure that chip is nicely set into there. It's set the proper direction. And now all it is is putting the top back on, screwing it back together, and putting our ECU back in our car and taking it for a drive. So I'm excited. guys so hooked it all back up it's definitely running you can hear it's idling really off right now now I'm gonna be honest this is the second day I hooked it up yesterday let it run it did the same thing and then it warmed up and leveled out so 
I'm wondering if that's just the car getting used to the new chip. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna go ahead and pop the hood, let it warm up, give it a little bit more gas. It is getting low on fuel and I'm not sure what grade fuel they put in here. And I know this chip uh, runs, it says uh, 91 octane, but we have 93 here in Florida. So I'm gonna go ahead, go down and put a bunch of the 93 octane in there. I'm gonna run some fuel cleaner through it too because I don't know what the pass owner's done with this. And then um, on future videos, we're gonna do spark plugs, wires, cap rotor, all that stuff's gonna be done. So hopefully we can get rid of this rough idle completely. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna pop the hood, rev it up, see if we can get this thing to idle out and I'll finish off the video. All right guys, so after just a couple minutes of letting it warm up, it is idling out really, really nicely. You can hear how awesome this exhaust sounds. Now, if you guys missed it, this is an HKS muffler that was actually off of a, a GS300, and I uh, got it off of Xavier. He had two of them, so I got one for this car, and we're going to be putting one on our SC300. And I love the deep rumble it gives at idle. And then, uh, if you guys missed the other video, which you can go back and see all of these, we installed an air intake right up in here, and that sounds awesome as well. So I'm gonna go ahead, um, end this video, guys, for you on some res. I'm very excited about this, because now I can go ahead, we can do a full tune-up on this thing, uh, we can go ahead and do some of the other things that we have for future projects, which we're gonna be adjusting the cams. We're gonna be port and polishing the intake manifold, as well as the throttle body on this. So we're gonna basically clean up all all that area, get better flow of gas, get better flow of air. Uh, and this exhaust is already starting to have some cracks and pops, which is absolutely awesome. So uh, doing all these things is gonna make the car not only perform better, but have a better sound. And this is all stuff that we're doing for well under a thousand bucks. That's gonna give the car ultimately a really nice pickup considering the weight of this 2,500 pound stock. My guess is this thing is well under 2,000 pounds, probably closer to 1,800 since almost everything has really been taken out of this that consists of weight. Oh, also we got our roll cage welded in, which obviously adds more weight, but the roll cage has been welded in. I'll be featuring that on probably the next video going forward because we're gonna do a lot of the exterior stuff. So once again, my name's Pete. This is Pete's Carport. You guys have a phenomenal week, a blessed day. I'm gonna end this video with some revs, uh, some low and high revs of this car. So have an awesome day, guys.